What is up, YouTube? This is Cody in the Real Sports Talk, bringing you the pre-race video for the Auto Club 400 at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana. And, well, looking at the Nationwide Series race yesterday, Joe Gibbs Racing got its eighth straight win in the Nationwide Series at the Auto Club Speedway, which is pretty incredible that they're dominating in that fashion. I believe Kyle Busch had five or six of those before, but he is obviously not racing with them anymore. He had a decent day today, but uh, Miss Q on pit road took him out of contention, even though it looked like he could be a contender late. And all, for all the Danica watchers out there, she had an engine problem. She did not finish well. She did not even, she went to the garage and come back. She was out early. And Joe Gibbs, as I said, continued his run. Eight straight win with Joey Logano in that 18 car. And Ricky Stenhouse holding his own in the championship battle, keeping close to Elliott Sadler, who finished with a respectable top 10 finish in ninth place. Joey Logano's teammate Brian Scott finally got that top 5 decent finish he was looking for. He finished 4th. And Kenny Wallace did pretty decent today, too. He got a 7th place finish out of that, which is really good for Kenny because he's had some bad luck this season. And Elliott Sadler with that ninth place finish does remain the points leader in that series with Austin Dillon keeping close in third, and there are only four cautions in the race, so there's going to be long green flag stretches, and pit stops are going to be very important, and when you get them, either on caution or under green, just because you can lose so much ground either way. We saw Brad Keselowski was re leading the race early there. He tried to get into his pit, slid his tires, and just had issues with that because he got too close to the wall. The pick, remember, the tire changer had problems with that, and so he lost some spots on pit road, had a 20-second stop. He was put back in the field. He did fight back towards the end to a third-place finish, but that really marred him back in traffic early, and it took him a long time to get back. What's good about Fontana is that it's a really wide racetrack, allows a lot of racing, four or five, even six wide at points if the drivers are willing to push it to that. That's obviously off of restarts when the drivers are all clumped up, and it Brings some great action on the track. There's a lot of cautions, but I think like the nationwide race, there's not going to be a ton of cautions tomorrow. Most of them coming at the end of the race, and that means we're going to have those long green flag stretches where you're going to have to hit your marks on pit road, and the pit crew is going to have to do its job, and really it's going to be a battle of consistency all day, and picking all those lines out of the five, six lanes on the track that you're able to run, picking the right one that works best for you and your car, driving style. You got the guys that are going to be bottom feeders. They're just going to hug the bottom of the racetrack, the apron, that white line. And you got the guys that are going to run up on the wall, trying to keep as much speed through the corners as, poss as possible. And you're going to need a lot of horsepower on the sh these long straightaways at Fontana, because on this two-mile track, on the front stretch and the back stretch, they are longer than normal straightaways, obviously, that we've been to so far, except for Daytona. And it's one of the bigger tracks they go to as far as width and just racing room on the racetrack, so that provides for a lot of great action on the track. For the nationwide race tomorrow, the Auto Club 400, we have the Gibbs cars having even more success this weekend. They've been good so far. They're hoping to wrap it up with a win here, and they swept the front row with Hamlin taking the pole and Kyle Busch starting on the outside pole, or second position, I guess, because Hamlin gets to choose his lane. Depending on where Hamlin goes, will dictate where Kyle Busch goes on that first start. And another big part of this race now is it's the fifth race in the season. So after this, we have the top 35 in the points. They are going to be locked into the race. All the excuse me, they're going to be locked in all the races from here on out in the top 35. And if they're not in the top 35, they're going to have to race their way in. Up to this point, they had last year's point standings, and that means like Dana Kapatrick's car, the 10 car that's driven by David Rudiman, that's going to be. They're going to have to stay in the top 35, or else Danica is going to have to qualify her way in like the other guys that are outside the top 35. But if Rudiman, I believe they're in 30th in points right now, if Rudiman can keep that, then that's going to be huge for Danica's development in the series. And Because if she misses a race, that's not going to be good. But it's really not looking like that at this point, because she's a few positions to the good. Well, her car is, I guess, for the limited races that she is going to race this season. And all the other people that are fighting for those top 35 spots. I'll get you more on that at the end of the race tomorrow. 
we will move forward to the practice feeds on the charts, and the Toyotas were just dominating that. They were at the top in every practice. You had Mark Martin, that was pretty fast. Clint Boyer was at the top, I believe, in the first practice, and in the last two practices, Denny Hamlin was at the top of the speed charts, and you had Jeff Gordon in second in the second to last practice, I think, and Jimmy Johnson was in the top ten in all the practices, too, so he's going to be a guy to look out for. And speaking of Jimmy Johnson, his penalty was lifted, actually. The sixth race suspension for Chad Knauss and the crew chief and also the car chief, I forget the guy's first name, Manic, and he is going to be free of charge. And he also got his 25 points back. Chad Knauss did not get the fine back that he received. He did not get that money back. But that's not really a huge chunk of change for him. So that's not a great deal, I guess. But, as I said, his penalties were lifted, so he got his 25 points back, and that moved him to 11th in the point standings, now in position to get into the chase if the chase were to start tomorrow, which obviously it's not. We have a ton of time to go until then. But that 25 points could be big at that time if Jimmy Johnson continues to ride this borderline that he's been riding with the consistency issues. But he's, I think he's going to shape up, and he should be good by the time we get to the chase. I think this is going to be a huge morale boost for them, and they're going to be looking to almost get some vindication here with this race. And I'd look out for him to be a contender toward the end. As I said, top 10 in all the practices this weekend. And we're really going to have to look out for Jimmy Johnson when the white flag dr drops on Sunday. So another couple guys that I think you really need to look out for, I think the top feeders, the guys that like to rim ride around the top of the track, Guys like Martin Truex and Casey Kane are going to be huge guys to look out for. I think Casey Kane can win this race if he keeps his car clean and does not overdrive it, as he tends to do. He just overdrives it sometimes. I don't know what what's going on with him, but it's always been an issue with him. And at least the last few seasons, I don't know if it's the pressure or what, but he needs to just calm down and let his skills take over because he's a great race car driver. That's why Rick Hendrick hired him. And he is capable of winning races in the series, obviously. And he likes going around the high side of the track. I think if he can keep his nose clean, keep the car off the wall, not make any mistakes, he can definitely be, definitely be a guy we can look out for at the end of this race. And also, Martin Truex, he's a guy that a lot of people are questioning whether he is going to be consistent this season. He's had good runs in the past, but he hasn't been able to finish in past seasons. I think this is really an opportunity for him to show that he is for real this year and he can get it done. And a win would really silence doubters. And this could be a place, if Dale Jr. decides to hang it all out, he could be a guy to look out for in the end. But I think my pick for this week is going to be Casey Kane to take the victory. Tell me who you guys think is going to win the race, or who you think has a shot, maybe Dark Horse, what the conditions are going to be like. I know it rained here at some point this weekend, so the track isn't completely rubbered up, but... It's good to go now. They raced on it yesterday in the Nationwide Series, and it should be a good race today.